All right, last set of examples here. Now we're multiplying, we're distributing that square root of 5 through to those parentheses. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to distribute. All right, so when we do that, if we write this out, we have the square root of 5 times the square root of 3 minus the square root of 5 times the square root of 75. Okay, now let's use our multiplication property with radicals. If we have the square root of 5 times the square root of 3, we know that's the same as the square root of 5 times 3. Minus, if we have the square root of 5 times the square root of 75, we know that's the same as the square root of 5 times 75. Okay, now let's keep rewriting it. We now have the square root of 15 minus the square root. You might need to use a calculator. If we multiply those together, we're going to get 375. Now, keep in mind, we're trying to simplify these. We want to try to get like radicals. Okay, we have a square root of 15 and a square root of 375. Let's try to rewrite this so we can have a radical 15 on the right side here. We want a radicand of 15 underneath there. So let's think. Can we rewrite 375 as 15 times some number? Okay, so if we were to use a calculator, we'd divide 375 by 15, and we would end up with a 25. Okay, we're getting close. We still have that left side of square root of 15. Now, using that multiplication property, we can rewrite the right side as square root of 15 times square root of 25. Now, we know what the square root of 25 is. Okay, that's our perfect square. That's going to be 5. So when we take the square root of 25, we have 5. Let's go ahead and write that out front of the 15. Again, remember, it's multiplication, so we can switch the numbers around. And we have a 15, square root of 15, minus this. Now we have our like terms. We have our like radicand. We have our like index. This is the same as kind of 1 times that. So if we have 1 square root of 15 and we take away 5 of them, we're going to end up with a negative 4 radical 15. And this is our answer. This is our simplified form. We had to keep working until we got like radicals. All right, let's do our last example here. Now we have what we, we see, this is a binomial. There's two terms there, and it's a binomial squared. So if we remember, if we rewrite that out, squared just means basically the same thing multiplied twice. So we have 2 square roots of 5 times 2 square roots of 5 minus 4. We're just basically doing it twice. Okay, think back to chapter 8. Think back to our last chapter. When we are multiplying binomials, we're going to use the box method. Okay, that actually didn't go away. Like it or not, it's still here. So we're going to make our box. Remember, first term right here, 2 square root of 5, and we have a minus 4. 2 square root of 5 and a minus 4. Now remember, inside we're multiplying. Ooh, we haven't done this before. Let's see. We have 2 square root of 5 times 2 square root of 5. Really what we're doing is all of these are being multiplied together. So if we want to switch around the order, we can. Um, we can do 2 times 2, which is 4, and then we have radical 5 times radical 5. Okay, we can do this one of two ways. There is a shortcut, but let's go ahead and approach it the long way to start. If we use our multiplication property, we know that's the same as the square root of 5 times 5, which is the square root of 25. We still have that times 4 out here. And we know the square root of 25 is 5. So really, in the end, we get 4 times 5, which is 20. Okay, so that's what we get in our first box. We have a 20 here. All right, the radicals actually disappear. Now, this shortcut that we'll kind of work with, and we'll see it'll work out a little better in the future. When we have two radicands that are the same, and we're multiplying the radicals together, square root of 5 times square root of 5, we can just drop the radical, and we know it's going to be 5. If it was square root of 10 times square root of 10, we can drop the radical, it's just going to be 10. Square root of 8 times square root of 8, drop the radical, it's just going to be 8. Okay, and that's a shortcut we'll use in the future. Now, multiply the outside. If we have negative 4 times 2 square root of 5, we're back in our box here. We're going to have negative 8 because we're multiplying negative 4 and 2. Negative 8 square root of 5. Now, if we have that in that box, negative 4 times 2, again, is negative 8 square root of 5. In our last box, two negatives give us a positive when we're multiplying. And then if we think back to chapter 8 again, we finish this up. Okay, what we have is 20 plus 16. We're combining like terms. We get a 36 there. Negative plus a negative 
is a negative 16 square root of 5. Notice we have like radicals there. Square root of 5, square root of 5. They're both negative 8s. Negative 8 plus negative 8 is negative 16. And we have our simplified answer.